What up, my name is Brad, welcome back to 5.9 Gaming. So with the new Pokemon Snap coming out in roughly four, three days, however often, right now it's five days until it comes out, but I'm assuming this won't go up the second we're recording it. So with the new Pokemon Snap coming out, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about 10 Pokemon that we love from the original Pokemon Snap. Now it may be nostalgic, it may be it's just a cool Pokemon, it may be something that just sticks out to us in one way or the other. There's no ranking on this, even though it does go 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down to 1. There's no official ranking on it, so we're not like picking favorites here. But I am joined by the boy, Tystra. How are you doing today? What's going on, my dudes? Doing pretty good. Just ready to uh, go into uh, some of these Pokemon because some of these are really, really fun to like, you know, take pictures of in general. And uh, a lot of nostalgia factor in this, especially with it being the first 151 in this game. So I'm very excited. Well, there's technically 63, but yes, the 151. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but ba based on God knows why they couldn't add what they couldn't add one more to match the N64. Think about that. That would have been funny. There's 60. I don't even understand why that's a thing. But either way, let's get into the list. We're starting at number 10. Let's go. We had to go with the OG Lapras in Beach because it's a cool mechanic, but it's also one of the first Pokemon you see like in the entire game. So say you were new to Pokemon way back in, I think it was 98 when this game came out. Uh, say you were new to it, it's one of the first Pokemon you're exposed to if you'd never watched the anime or anything like that. And you see this Lapras, cool, you take a quick little picture, and then you just go on your way, you keep taking pictures of Pidgeys and Snorlaxes, whatever else. But it turns out, if you take a picture of Lapras each time you see it, you have a higher chance at the very end of seeing multiple Laprases in one picture. I personally think that's dope. I don't know your opinions on it, Tystra. Yeah, no, uh, I didn't even know about the Laprases because, honestly, as a kid, I was very bad at taking pictures of Pokemon. But when I did uh, hear about the uh, multiple Laprases, I was like, that would have been cool because in the show you got to see, like, you know, Laprases family. And it's a it's a treat to see, so it would have been cool to see it in the game for me. But, uh, yeah, it definitely sounded cool. Dude, I, don't, don't feel bad, man. There was a time I was in college and I bought a Nintendo 64 and I bought Snap. And I sat up to like 6 o'clock in the morning learning all this stuff. So no, I wasn't a little kid picking this stuff up so, don't <laughs> so yeah that's our number 10 pick is lapras over on beach yeah so for our number nine uh how would you feel if there was something that you couldn't really explain and what's really fun about the uh first generation of pokemon is that we had ghastly haunter and gengar in the tunnel you could actually find a haunter without even knowing that you actually found a haunter uh how to find this is that you see an odd orb moving around uh, after the uh, Zapdos hatches and then from there uh, If you photograph it, it turns out later that you look through your photographs and you found a haunter And I thought this was really cool because the fact that you don't know what you're taking a picture of And it's just a mystery and then you find out it is a haunter and it really plays well into the ghost type Pokemon uh, Esque thing. So what do you think about that Brad? Well, so actually this is one of the few that I do have a memory of uh, it's very, very faint. I mean, I bet you I was six, seven years old whenever I played it the first time. But I do remember right when the doors open and that Zubat flies in your face and you see the little orb. I remember replaying that stage a bunch to try and get good pictures of Haunter after I found out it was Haunter. Mm -hmm. Like, that's one of the few memories I actually have Like that's very vivid for some reason. I can't remember math, but I can remember Haunter and uh, <laughs> the tunnel level on Pokemon Snap. But, um, yeah, I... I amazing i don't know what else to say with that i think it's pokemon snap had a, an era of like mystery to it right like obviously you were taking pictures when all you've been doing was catching pokemon and all the other games it was already different as it was but they threw in little tidbits like this and i think that's awesome and that's what i hope to see from the new pokemon snap too so coming in at number eight uh we, we both have a pick for volcano we both have a pick for river cave and valley we just did one of the first two entry levels um i picked arcanine because this is one of the ones that, again, I would have never known as a kid. But as I got older and I played it again, I replayed whenever I bought it in 64. And you throw a bunch of pester balls into the little pits right before uh, the end of the level. And Arcanine can pop out sometimes. And I think that's cool. It's another one of those little tidbits that it just adds variety to it. Because you would think, okay, there's Growlithe. That's cool. I have nothing I can knock into him. I can't. He doesn't evolve. I hit him with a pester ball. But you chuck in little pits of fire and boom, an Arcanine can pop out. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely uh, uh, one that I didn't know about either, but um, Arcanine being one of those Pokemon that everybody loved from Gen 1, just because of the look and the feel of the Pokemon, 
Like, I can only imagine how it would feel as a photographer. You're going through this um, basic safari journey, and then boom, out comes a giant, you know, dog like Arcanine, and just looking majestic. So, um, it seems like it'd be a pretty cool picture to take. He's one of those few Pokemon that he just had a perfect design. And obviously a lot of nostalgia comes from me saying that, of course. There's a lot of Pokemon perfect designs nowadays, too. But he's just one of those OG Pokemon that was just... He's just a fire dog. What else do you want? Yeah. <laughs> he's just a six-foot fire dog. Like, I'm in. And then, of course, here at our uh, number... S- what? Seven now? No, yeah, we're seven. at seven. Yeah. <laughs> I already forgot. One that a lot of fans love, uh, and personally it was one of my favorites, just because I'm a Charmander guy. At the end of the course, you find uh, Charmeleon, and once you hit him into the lava, boom, out comes giant Charizard dragon just right in front of you. And I always had fun with this because I always wanted to be like, how can I take the best picture of Charizard? You know, so I tried throwing the ball earlier, tried throwing the ball later just to see if I could get a behind picture before I exit the course. And it was just it was just super fun to see one of my favorite Pokemon, you know, in such a majestic fashion. All right, coming in at the number six slot, we have. Slowbro over on River. Now, Slowbro is cool because it's another one of those. You, you wouldn't think, let me lure this Pokemon over to the edge. Of course, maybe you do. You've already been playing for a little while at this point with three or four levels in. So maybe you've kind of picked it up, but it was still cool that you lure them over. They give you a little sign that shows, hey, there's shelter in this water. And you're like, that's oh, a slowpoke, bro. And you lure him over to the water. He dips his tail in. Boom, it falls right there. I could never get a good picture of this slowpoke, though, because by the time slowpoke, I know he's slow. I understand. But by the time he would walk over to the water, I was already, like, way far away. So it's like, I'll take whatever picture I can get, I guess. That's fine. But still a cool little thing. Yeah, and it's always funny how they make that the lore of how Slowpoke evolved into Slowbro is that he dipped his tail in and a shelter grabbed it and then boom, he evolved. I found it really cool that they actually added that into Pokemon Snap itself. So it was a really cool tie-in to, you know, the Pokedex entries, the anime and all that. So That's one of those age-old, like, what kind of Pokemon where it's like, hold on. But then, I mean, they actually did release the, uh, what was it, the Gen 2 betas that showed that Slowpoke, there was supposed to be a Pokemon specifically, like, not Shelter, that was designed to be that tail, essentially. Right. You know, the the big shell thing. There was actually a design for that. I don't know if whoever's editing this can find um, an image of that. But I think that's I, that's cool. I mean, nowadays, it's just evolved down to, hey, like, it's just a Shelter. But I'm still down for it. I think it's... We even have Galarian Slowbro nowadays, and... I've always liked the Slowbro line. I don't know. There's not much else I could really say on him. I've always liked him since day one. All right. And then up for our number five, and this one kind of hits a little close to home for me because uh, for those of you who know about the soul locks that me and Waffles do, uh, we got Porygon also in uh, in the same area for the river. Um, I didn't know about this at first, but apparently on the right bank uh where you could see like a couple of uh, different shapes camouflaged in some bushes if you throw items and all that you get it to move and then once you hit it with the pester ball uh porygon pops up and i had no idea about this and i think it's really cool uh not only that but porygon's kind of become like a little favorite of mine because of those uh soul locks with waffles so i'm a little impartial but i also just like the fact that pokemon snap again did these really weird concepts of like how to find these pokemon and how to like get them to come out and seeing that porygon could camouflage and stay away from everybody uh and then you have to lure them out and then uncamouflage them to get a good picture i think that's absolutely awesome and i can't wait for it to happen in the next game too yeah and then it plays into going to the next level too which is that is, that is a cool design of this game that like it almost forces you to get better at it because you got to keep taking pictures of the same Pokemon over and over again until you eventually are like, oh, there's a Porygon on the wall. I just hit him and he unlocks the next stage. <laughs> you know, but you maybe you play it 30 times before you realize that. Cap out all your good pictures and everything. It forces you to get better, but it also gives you a nice little, if you know what you're doing, you can do it like first, second try, right? I think that's cool. And of course, at number four, we also have another one that I feel is really, really cool. And I, ha- and I didn't pay too much attention to this before, but I found this out, is that... When you're going through the level, you could find, you know, 
Bulbasaur. But if you pay very close attention, you can find a Bulbasaur with beady eyes. And you wonder, what is that? That's not a normal Bulbasaur. And it isn't. It's actually a Ditto. And if you hit it with a Pester Ball, it transforms into a Ditto itself. And I think that's a great attention to detail because it's uh, kind of a callback to the anime where I can't remember her name, but her Ditto kept transforming, but it wasn't a perfect transformation. And I always love the, the BDI Ditto Pokemon because I think they're absolutely adorable. So... That, that's one of those ones you start the level out and you're like, okay, this Bulbasaur is whatever. And maybe it's something you look at a picture afterwards and you're like, the heck's wrong with that Bulbasaur? And like you said, that's what's cool about Pokemon is though they can tie it in. So like if you're like a long-standing fan, you know exactly what that is. But if you're not, you're like, what the heck? Like you run it again. Then you hit it with something, you know, you're like, okay, throw an apple. All right, nothing. He just eats the apple. Chuck over a pester ball. Boom. You got a dip. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, number three. Now this is, a per this is one that I actually requested from Tyser that I take. Just because I think it's a really cool picture. Um, basically, if you save... So, in Cave, as you're going down, you see some Jigglypuffs getting attacked by Coughings, whatever else. If you can manage to nail those Coughings, Pester Balls, they leave the Jigglypuffs alone. And at the end of the level, you'll have three Jigglypuffs all sitting there singing. Now, the good part of this one is, you can either get the picture of them singing, and you get points for that. Or you can play the Pokey Flute, and you can irritate the Jigglypuffs, and then they get mad, and you get more points for that. And there's just so many layers that go into getting a better picture of Jigglypuff that I think that's amazing. I love that so much. That they, they, a Pokemon, I, I, Jigglypuff's obviously popular. It's in Smash Bros, mm -hmm. right? But just one Pokemon having like three different types of pictures you can get of it. You can get it when it's flying, getting chased by coughing. You can get it when it's singing, when it's mad. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, Jigglypuff is one of those like log standing Pokemon that everybody knows. And the fact that you could actually take a picture like that just makes me chuckle because again Jigglypuff is 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 a Pokemon with an attitude problem <laughs> so I think it's awesome that you could actually take a picture like that again that's another anime callback yeah. there's so the, Pokemon has been, always been really good at that of course but it's so good at that because obviously it gets irritated when it hears different music or people cut off its singing in the anime and it starts drawing all over and stuff like that um I they're so good at that that it just it blows my mind that even way back when when Pokemon was still pretty new they were good at making those little tie-ins. Pokemon's always succeeded when it comes to little tiny just tie-ins that if you're a long-standing fan, you know exactly what it is. Either way, that's my pick for number three. Again, these are not ranked, but probably my favorite is the Jigglypuff. All right, and then here for our uh, number two, uh, actually is kind of a funny one because again, we've already talked about you know the Charmeleon Charizard, but this one doesn't require you to actually hit anything into the pool of uh, water. This requires you to actually throw just pester balls into the water and out bursts, you know, an icon of the series, Dragonite, being the pseudo legendary of the first 151. And I think it's really cool just because again, like, you know, this is one of those ones where you look at it and this Pokemon is a beast. So you're seeing it burst forth and it's right in front of your face. And it kind of, as a kid, like knowing that, it was a really fun moment, and I was super excited to see Dragonite because at that time I was like, "Yeah, Dragonite's powerful and he's he's massive," and seeing him just made me giddy. Dude, I noticed Dragonite's a very polarizing pseudo nowadays mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't have that attachment. Like you remember probably watching like, so like episode six or something with the giant Dragonite. That's something that's like instilled in my brain probably till the day I die. Like watching that episode and being like, "Wait a minute, how do I get a giant Dragonite?" Like, again, I was like a six-year-old, right? Seven right, right. So it makes sense. But, like, that's something that's instilled. So nowadays, if people see Dragonite, it's just a goofy dragon. But it's like, no, Dragonite is, like you said, he's an icon. And absolutely love it. And you would never think. Because maybe you get the star you all the way down there. He evolves into star me. You know, you're throwing apples in the water. You, oh, yeah, you look dratini. That's cool. Just chuck a couple pester balls in there. Boom. Dragonite for you. Fantastic. Yeah, he's definitely one of those ones that, no matter what, like... Even if you saw him in regular games, you're like, oh, I gotta get, I gotta get either him or Dratini. And getting the Dratini to evolve to Dragonite is no easy feat. So seeing a Dragonite just right there in your face with like, ugh, I can't get over it. All right, now this is technically number one, but again, not ranked. But this is probably the most, I would say, the most iconic. Would you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. The, yeah, Gyarados in the Valley, I would say, is the most iconic. I remember when I was a kid. 
thinking this was so difficult to get. And then we just played through Pokemon Snap over on 5.9 Gaming, if you didn't check it out. Twitch.tv slash 5.9 Gaming. Uh, we just played through the original one. And you watch, like, Gresh get it in, like, 20 seconds. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, hold on. I remember that being difficult. But basically what you got to do is you got to knock the Mankey back. He gets irritated. Or, no, you have to knock a Magikarp onto the water by throwing Pester Balls into the water. He goes up there. You knock the Magikarp over to Mankey. Mankey kicks it up over the mountain, which is, like, a reference to Magikarp's Pokedex entries that say you can jump a mountain or whatever else. Plops back down when you go, like, another, what, 30 seconds into the level, give or take. He plops back down. Hops into the waterfall and evolves into Gyarados, and then you get that super iconic, dope image of Gyarados coming out of the waterfall. Um, so we kind of had to put it on the list essentially for that because it's just so well known and it's perfectly executed because it's something again you wouldn't really know. You oh, look, I took a picture of Mankey, that's pretty cool, but it's like let me lock, let me knock a Magikarp up onto the land real quick, he'll flop over and get kicked by Mankey. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, the build up to it is definitely funny. Um, Especially since, you know, you have to get the Magikarp to Mankey. Mankey has to kick it up. And then, yeah, from then on, it's like you get basically the staples or one of the staples of the first 151 Pokemon. Because getting that Gyarados was no easy task in the regular game. So seeing the Gyarados just right again, it's the same thing with Dragonite. When it's right in front of your face, you're just kind of in awe. You're like, oh, it's a, it's a Gyarados. And... The f again, the fact that it's so iconic just makes it even better. And then, of course, it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair for us to not mention these because these are uh, super iconic Pokemon, obviously, being of legendary status. But we also felt like we wanted the others to shine. So let's go ahead and talk about, really quick, the uh, three legendaries that hatch from eggs. We have Moltres, where in the volcano level, uh, if you knock it into the lava, it hatches into Moltres. You have Zapdos, where uh, it's hatched by Pikachu's Thunderbolt attack, uh, and it will fly to the generator and begin, you know, attacking it and so on. And then, of course, you have the Articuno, which I never figured out, but now I know, uh, that the Jinxes dance re uh, to the Poke Flute, and it will cause the egg for Articuno to hatch. And, of course, like I said before, these are... The flying type legendaries that everybody wanted to grab in the games when uh, everything was released. So seeing all three of them represented in some fashion, all hatching from eggs, uh, is is a treat in of itself. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there's no going wrong with throwing legendaries into this. Obviously, Gen 1 doesn't have many legendaries. Um, I will say it's a little crazy. We don't have a Mewtwo representation in this game. Mm -hmm. Because you would think, I love, obviously we're going to get to Mew in a second talking about it. But you would think Mewtwo would have representation. It's cool we got the birds and Mew. It's just, who's the most popular Gen 1 Legendary? Let's be honest here. Right, right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, hey, Blastoise is dope, but we got Charizard, right? It's the same kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, But still, amazing. I, I remember Zapdos. Probably, Zapdos is my favorite. Probably the most vividly. Because uh, I had no idea how this stuff obviously worked as a kid. I remember asking my friend's neighbor, because he was like 16 and he liked Pokemon. Right. This was back in, like, 98, 99, something like that. And he always helped me get through the original Gen 1 games as it was. And, yeah, I mean, it was the same kind of thing. He, like, blew my mind by just showing me instantly how to get it. And I was like, oh, my God. And it was literally majestic. I don't know. There's no way to describe it. Right. Besides saying majestic. All right. We'll finish off the list real quick because, obviously, these are not technically on the list. We did have to mention them. Mew. What's your thoughts on Mew? I want to know what you think before I go into it. Mew is absolutely, like, my favorite legendary like it's it's a, such a simple design and then of course you know with the you know not really lore but like in essence like stuff between it and ditto and i've always been fascinated with that so um mew is definitely one of my favorites i mean i have to agree that mew has it it's not the perfect design there's a couple other pokemon that have a better one technically speaking but for what it is it's probably perfect right it was a little ugly in gen one to be honest <laughs> i do remember I don't think I ever got a picture of me when I was a kid. Yeah, me neither. Because I remember getting to that level, and I could never hit that dang shield. Because it flies at the perfect angles, and you're just a little kid with a N64 controller. Like, I do remember that, but it was still just awesome. as a perfect way to finish the game off. I think as far as we know, the new Pokemon Snap has Celebi, right? I believe so. But I don't know if that actually means it's going to be the mythical you focus on. Right. But if it is, I'm down. Like, that'd be cool. That means... 
means we could have like 20 more Pokemon snaps if they go through every mythical. <laughs> we got <laughs> we got time, man. We got plenty of time, but I think that's cool. I would like to see more mythicals in the new Pokemon snap. I, I, I kind of a joke there, saying I want to see them do that. It would be cool to see Celebi, Jirachi, Shaman, Victini. Kind of hit all of them, but I don't expect the game to be like 40 hours long, right? So oh, probably yeah. Probably not, but I would imagine we'll squeeze a good 10 hours, 15 hours out of it. Something like that, and then kind of replay it to get your perfect pictures and stuff like that. But yeah, exactly. Finishing off with Mew, we had to at least bring it up. It's an awesome stage. We do want to know down in the comment section, though. Did you ever get a good picture of Mew? I know it seems like a generic question. You're like, well, of course I did. The game's been out 22 years, but I want to know. <laughs> and guys, that's gonna do it for us. We're, uh, with this video, uh, we want to deeply appreciate everybody for watching. And of course, with the new Pokemon Snap coming out, we definitely want you guys to take as many pictures as you can. And obviously, with you know how social media is now you know tweet at us not only to us individually but at five nine gaming one uh we want to see what you guys you know, are able to come up with pictures and such and then don't forget also to like comment subscribe and also hit that notification bell down below as it does help us and you also get our content right there uh brad what do you uh what do you got for closing? Pretty much, essentially that. Make sure you guys tweet at us. Keep an eye out as well, because when the new Pokemon Snap drops, we're going to have Goresh over on twitch.tv slash 59 gaming And it's going to be, he's going to be playing through the new Pokemon Snap. We'll have someone playing alongside him as well. So if you don't want to check out the Twitch, we're going to have the thir first 30 minutes of gameplay uploaded over to YouTube as well. So keep an eye out. But that's about all I really got. Make sure you send those pictures over. I want to see some cool stuff. I also want you guys to teach me how to play the game before it comes out. Like, show me all the little secrets and stuff. So tweet at me. Hey. <laughs> that makes my life. That's hey. not something I had as a little kid where I could be like, hey, I got 7,000 people. You mind showing me how to play this game real quick? Look, I didn't have that. So if you could, it's greatly appreciated. But we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much. Like Tyster said, make sure you sub, leave a like, all that kind of stuff. Leave us a comment down below. If you want to let us know. Actually, yeah, give us like a top like three. If you want to do a top ten, feel free to. But give us a top three of your favorite Pokemon. From the original Pokemon Snap if you did play it. And if you didn't play it, I recommend you pick it up on an emulator minimum. At least check it out because it's like an hour-long game. You can bust it out and it's worth it. But let's get out of here.